For more about China's SOEs and all this backdoor listing stuff, I'm joined by Sung Wong Sung, Smith Professor of Economics at uh, California State University. Good to see you, Professor. Thanks for joining us uh, on this topic. We're going to need your help because this is a little complicated. Um, okay, thank you. Help us first. How did it get to here? Because there's been a lot of talks of reforms over the past many, many, many years. And so here we go. The reforms have begun. Why? Well, China is exposed to uh, more competition, and also Chinese economy is slowing. As a result, uh, we need to reform China's SOEs to be more uh, competitive. So it's an important part of the economy, and uh, we need to improve efficiency. With the current efficiency, it cannot really continue on. It's a tremendous waste of resources. Okay, so the, but the flip side of it is, you know, all these employees that are being hired or work at the SOEs, if they were to merge, if they were to be combined, and then they would become more efficient, which I know a lot of business people want, ultimately one of the issues is going to be there's not enough jobs for everybody, isn't there? Well, you know, temporarily that could be the case. As a matter of fact, as you recall, in 1990s, uh, Premier Zhu Rongji uh, tried something uh, very similar, which resulted in, uh, you know, a lot of layoffs. So that, that's one of the consequences. But I think you have to really look at uh, both short-term and long-term. In the short-term, you can make uh, 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 some uh, accommodations for those uh, laid-off workers for training and education. But in the long run, there's no question that we need to improve efficiency of these SOEs, and that would be good for the economy. And then eventually, it will be creating more and higher-paying jobs for the Chinese economy. This issue of bringing more cap uh, private capital, I should say, uh, to the table, uh, how is it foreign ca private capital or domestic private capital? And then does that affect how the state, or I should say the government, gets their share of the profit? Well, I think, you know, uh, who puts in uh, capital that is not as important? The more important thing is, uh, first of all, you really need to introduce a circuit breaker in terms of uh, the governance. Right now, as you know, the state controls the SOEs, but having its own board, it can make its own decisions and then, of course, not have to, uh, you know, look, look up to uh, the government officials, which could tell them what to do. So I think they need more flexibility and more efficiency. Uh, I think that's what's uh, most important. Now, once you improve efficiency, then it becomes more easier to, uh, it becomes easier to acquire capital. For example, foreign capital, they are more likely to put in money into uh, Chinese SOEs, uh, knowing that it is efficient and it is generating a good bottom line. Under the current circumstances, it is more difficult, it, as you probably... It, I Look, uh, Professor, I mean, I, I have to say something here, because this has been a huge, huge challenge, not just in, in China, but in other parts of the world where they have very big state-owned enterprises, and they try to uh, make it private. So on one hand, it's, it's a government business, essentially. And then on the other hand, you want it to be like a private business where it's run extremely competitively. And those two things have never really worked very well together. What changes need to be made, or does there need to be a different system? Well, as I mentioned, I think, you know, one of the key is to introduce a, a circuit breaker in the government governance system. Uh, at the current system, uh, the government really uh, calls the shots. Uh, that is not really very efficient. As a result, you introduce kind of a Singapore style, a, uh, you know, its own board for the SOEs. And then the board could be introduced or appointed by the government, but uh, the board would be making all the decisions. The point is that this way, uh, the SOEs would have more flexibility, and it can do what is best for the economy and for the company. And so I think that's one of the most important things that you can do. In addition, of course, they can uh, decide to introduce or attract foreign capital or domestic capital, for that matter. Yeah. And uh, that will also uh, uh, increase efficiency. Now, when you talk about uh, introducing you know, private capital or uh, private uh, uh, ownership, not only are we talking about bringing in more money, but also a lot of times the know-how as well, and that is just as important. Um, yeah, because they want to be obviously competitive. Now, the flip side of all this is let's assume that the merging, merging begins and they start combining companies together. Some people might argue that, well, you only have like one or two companies in every single sector, and is that ne necessarily a healthy thing for the economy? Well, not necessarily. As you know, for example, in the United States, uh, let's say, you know, uh, two cable companies, uh, they merge, and then they not only have to get the 
regu regulatory authorities' approvals, but also the Department of Justice they have to approve as well. So uh, there should be some, uh, uh, you know, screening process to make sure that there's really no uh, monopoly. On the other hand, you know, there are some natural monopolies. I just mentioned the cable companies in the United States. These are called the natural monopolies, which means that they have monopolies in exchange for some government control. So I think we have to be very careful about not creating, you know, uh, monopolies in the economy. I, I, well, first of all, I absolutely hate calling the cable companies here, so I, I hope China doesn't follow that, uh, that example. Professor, thank you very much. Have a good weekend. Thanks for getting us started here on a very complicated topic, by the way.